Well, we're going to have a look at this this book, this book this morning, the Bible, the book that is known to us as the Bible, and, and, and we're going to have a look at this idea of it being inspired by God. So it's it's quite a the, the word inspired is 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 uh, probably something that we uh, use in our com- sort of common English language today with a with a slightly different sort of slant on it. So we want to look at this idea of what what do we mean to be inspired by God? Because if we're talking about something being inspired, we in, t- in our modern uh, you know, vernacular, it's more about, you know, I, I feel inspired by someone's, I feel motivated by someone's action. But when we come to talk about the inspiration or the, 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 the inspiration of the Bible, it means something slightly different. So that's what we want to have a look at today, this idea of, of this book, the Bible, and what it means to be in, that it's inspired by God. But by way of background, we want to have a look at it and, and and, and set the scene by, by understanding a bit more about what we know about this book that is called the Bible. And we often refer, find it referred to as, as the Holy Bible. So, so what does it mean by, but what's the difference between uh, the Bible and, and this Holy Bible? Why is it called the Holy Bible then? And, and we'll come to look at that in, in slightly, in slightly later. And then we want to have a look at this idea of, of this inspiration. What does it mean that it says that it is inspired? What, what does that re- relate to? And then if we, once we've gathered all of these facts about this, this book that we, we have and that we read, well, I guess we want to sort of establish the credibility of that book because, well, there's lots of books that are available to read, aren't they? Why, why is it that we would pay particular time and attention to this to this book the bible and, and 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 a lot of that is to do with the credibility that the bible has in terms of both a historical and and a relevant book for us today so so we'll c- have a look at that idea of of the of the accuracy and the truth of the bible and then we want to answer the question as to whether all of the bible is relevant for us so you know, can we just can we look at the Bible and just sort of select portions out, or is it a a book that is entirely relevant for us? And, and that's probably a, a question which is 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 irrelevant and as as relevant in the 21st century as, as ever, because we find that people tend to say, well, look, I don't I don't find that part of the Bible as relevant for me today, and and you know I prefer to to, to ignore what that says. And so you know that's a, a really important question for us to answer. And then having then established all of these things, well, then we want to understand what we can actually use the Bible for. What, what is it that the, the what is the purpose of, of having the Bible? And, and what is the, what is the benefit of this, this, this word, the Bible? And then finally, at the end of that, having established all of these things, we then want to, to move on and quickly look at, at the at our end of our consideration. Well, Given all of those things, what is it then that is the message of the Bible? What does the Bible ask us to do today? How does that change and influence the way that we live our lives each and every day? Okay, so so what do we know about uh, this book called the Bible? Well, I guess the first thing we should really say is probably none of us in this hall would, would, would really understand, but we sort of know, and it's hard for us to understand, but... Actually, be able to pick up the, the the Bible and to read it in our own ling- language, whether that's that's whether that's English, whether that's Farsi, what, whatever language we we have, uh, uh, you know, that is our first language. This idea of just being able to pick up a book and read this book in our own language is is, is a relatively recent thing. There's there's been a lot of time since the Bible was written and since the Bible was completed around the, the birth, time of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, where, where people just couldn't read the Bible. There was, there was the very few copies of the Bible available. And, and, and what's more, they, the, the Bible was not available in the, in the common language of the people. For a lot of time through what is called the Middle Ages, so around the 15th, 16th, 17th century, uh, there was there was only the Bible was only available in Latin, and yet the the common language of the people was not 
Latin. So this idea that we can easily access and easily read the Bible is a real blessing for us in the area in which we live. And maybe something that we take for granted in terms of that accessibility. Yeah, we can we can look up the Bible on the internet. We can look at there's so many ways in which we can absorb the the, the, the words of the Bible, and yet maybe that that can to to some degree make us slightly complacent at at the same time. But in terms of the makeup of the Bible, well, we see the Bible as as, as a single book, don't we? It's, 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 it comes in a in a single publication, but actually it's a a compilation of of, of other books. So in total, there's, there's 66 books within the Bible. And, and, and those 66 books are split into two key sections. We have the first 39 books, which were, were uh, are the, the, Old, the Old Testament. So that starts with Genesis and moves through to the book of Malachi. And, and they, they span a, the, a long period that was well before the birth of Jesus. So... Uh, it's, a, it's a period of a, around about a thousand years between the, 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 first, uh, the writing of the first book and, and the writing of the last book of the Old Testament. And then the, the prophet Malachi was, around, was alive about 400 years before Jesus was born. And then there's a gap, there's a period of a gap, and then we have a, another section of the, of the Bible called the New Testament made up of 27 books, which were all written in, in, a, in a relatively short time frame, around about 100 years between the, the birth of Jesus and the end of the first century, what we call the first century AD. So, so there's these, these two sections of the Bible, the Old Testament and then the New Testament. And as we said in, in, in reference earlier, well, the Bible was originally written in three three separate and three different languages there is a small section of the bible that was written in aramaic but primarily they were written in, in their original language of hebrew for the old testament and they were written in greek for the new testament so so when the 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 actual documents were originally written they were written in in, in the original languages and and you know as we said earlier that the fact that we can have those translated into our own uh, birth languages today is a relatively recent phenomenon, but you know it's, it's important to understand that the the, the Bible was ri- originally written in Hebrew and in Greek. So you may find actually that when people are are, are looking at the Bible, that they actually there's a a real need sometimes to go back and to look at the original language because sometimes the the way in which the, the, the translation has been brought into other languages is not necessarily quite true to the original language that it was used. So that's often a, a tool which can be used to try and really understand the sense of the, Bible, the, the, of the words of the Bible, to go back and to look into more detail into the original word and the original language in which it was written. So what else do we know about this book called the Bible? Well, we know that the Bible was not written in one go. It, it, you know, a lot of books, although they may be written over a period of time, would be written in, in, in one go. And, and, you know, a novelist would not sit down and, and write, you know, uh, write a chapter one year, wait three years and write another chapter. They would tend to write that, that book in, in, a, uh, in, in one sort of sitting, as it were. But the Bible was not like that. The Bible was not written in one go. The books were written in, in isolation, as it were, and were compiled at a later period. So, so these, these books were, were, were written sort of individually and then compiled into this, what we know as the scriptures today at a later point. The writers of the scripture and the authors of these different books came from lots of different backgrounds. If you think about the, the people who wrote the books, well, we have, for example, David, who wrote a lot of the Psalms, who was, who was a shepherd. We have David also then as a, in his role as the king, but also Solomon, who was a king. So Solomon wrote a lot of the scriptures and he was a king. So he came from a very different background from that of a shepherd. We have people like Peter, who, who wrote some of the New Testament, who was originally a fisherman. We have Paul, who wrote a lot of the New Testament, who was a tent maker. Right? So, th- so these people came from all sorts of different 
occupations, different backgrounds, different regions, different countries, and they, they all came from these the, a diverse range of, of places, but all their writings have all been brought together into this one book that is the Bible. And I think, you know, let's, let's keep that idea in the back of our mind, but I think that's part of the miracle of the Bible is that the fact that there was such diversity of time, such diversity of, of background, such that, you know, so many different people contributed to this one book. The fact that it is a, a consistent and a, a well brought together, well compiled book is part of the miracle of the Bible that we have today. And I think we'll come to look at why that is. But we find, don't we, that the message of the Bible focuses a lot on Israel. So, it, you know, for, for all the different threads that we have on the in the Bible, they all kind of draw together and are all to do are linked to the, the nation of Israel because they are described in the Bible as being the chosen nation of God. And it's through through the, the, the nation of Israel that God's plan to save humankind has been established. So that, that's you know, the common theme that seems to link all of the different aspects of the Bible together. <coughs> so why then is this book called the Holy Bible? Well, this is interesting. I guess you know, I've, I've grown up, not, you know, we, 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 we know, don't we, that the, this idea of the, of the word Bible has been something that is probably familiar to many of us for a long time. But actually the Greek word, and, and we talk about, didn't we, the original language, uh, there is a, the word Bible in our English language comes from a Greek word that literally means the books. It actually wasn't until I, uh, you know, I'd sort of, I guess I was aware of this at somewhere in the background, but actually uh, the first time I ever went to France on holiday and drove into a town, I saw a, a library, it's called a uh, Bibliotech. And it wasn't until I sort of, I was like, why, that's a sort of straight, but then I all of a sudden made that connection. And, you know, again, the, the French word has come from that same original Greek, where it's this idea of being related to books. So, so literally, this idea of the Bible literally means the books. And this idea of the Holy Bible then, well, the, the, the idea of holy literally means that it's separate or it is special. So when we talk about the Holy Bible, well, all, all we're talking about is that these are, are, a, are a separate or a special set of books. And I guess that's the, that's the challenge for us, isn't it? Because if we were to go into the homes and into to many houses, we would see people have a, 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 a number of books set out on the shelf. And yet this is the, the idea of this Holy Bible is trying to say, well, actually, this is a special or a separate set of books, not just one that should be left on the, on the, on the shelf to gather dust. But this is one that, that really demands our attention and demands us to read it. There's an estimate from the Bible Society that suggests that over time there's been between five and seven billion Bibles printed. The challenge for all of us, isn't it, is, is not just to leave that Bible on the shelf, but to, to read it and to understand it. And hopefully that's what we're going to have a look at uh, a little bit later in our, in our consideration this morning. So what is this idea then of it being inspired? Well, we found, didn't we, if, if we turn to our, our reading in, in Second of Timothy chapter 3, this idea of inspiration or is, is pulled from, from there. Second of Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And what does this idea of inspired mean? Well, it literally means to be breathed out. So it's almost as though, uh, you know, I'm going to try and I'm going to try and replicate it, but it's almost as though it's a <sighs> I know that's a slightly strange sound, isn't it? But I, I had to give the audio to sort of make it, you know, you understand that I wasn't just breathing in and out normally. But, you know, this idea of to be breathed out, and literally that's what that word really means. And we find from, from the Bible that actually it was men and women who wrote the words of the Bible, but they were doing this on the behalf of God. It was as though God was breathing out 
And the men and women who were writing the words then wrote down what they were, what they were told to write. If you turn to the later into the New Testament, we find, I'll put it on the screen, we find this passage here in the second epistle of Peter in chapter 1. So the second epistle of Peter chapter 1 says, So we have the prophetic word made more sure, to which you do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star arises in your heart, but know this first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture is as a matter of one's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. Okay, so here's, here's this idea of, of men or men and women being moved by the Holy Spirit, being moved, being that God breathed out and these people were moved to write these things and the Holy Spirit of the power of God helped to achieve that. So that's what this idea of, of inspiration really means. It's all about God giving the direction for, for men and women to write down the things which we have recorded for us. There's numerous places in the Bible where it says that we, we find prophets and people saying, this is what God says. This is what God wants you to hear. So literally we are hearing and, being, and, and reading the words of God. So, so that's, what, you know, that's what this idea of, of inspiration is all about. This idea, the words of the Bible are literally the words of God. And the challenge then to us is then if we then ignore the words of the Bible, we are not listening to God who is the great creator. So, so that's what this idea of inspiration is all about. It's all about God giving direction to, to these words that are being caused to be written. We referred earlier, didn't we, to this idea of the miracle of the Bible, the fact that the diversity of, of time and, and of, of uh, occupation and of, of culture that these people were, di different people came from, all these different authors of the Bible, well, the common, thing, the common theme, the common thread was that all of these people we're writing under the guidance and the direction of God. And that is where the, 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 the miracle of the Bible really occurs because it is really just the, the, the Bible is just the, the message that comes from God written by all these different people. And therefore it is, it is consistent and it is beneficial for all of us to read. How then do we know that the Bible is true? Because that becomes a... A, a, a real test of time. Well, the words of the Bible have proven to be true. We have this uh, idea in the Bible of this, this, this term, this word prophecies. Okay, so prophecies are all about uh, people from uh, one time making a statement about things that they, they understand are going to happen in the future. Okay, so there's a real, there's a real testament of, you know, Someone says something at one time and then years, you know, whether it be tens or hundreds of years later, those things prove to be true. Well, the Bible has made many statements about what, you know, what uh, is going to happen in the future. And we can, we can look at examples, we're not going to look today, but there's lots of examples of things that the Bible said would happen that have happened subsequently in time. We'll have a look at an example of that, one of those, just in a, in a short uh, short time. But there's lots of prophecies which have been fulfilled. And so I guess that gives us some, some substance to the fact that the Bible is a true and accurate book. What else do we have? Well, we know, don't we, that there's, there's stories in the, in the Bible that happened long, long ago. And that actually there's been things discovered by archaeologists, so people who dig in the ground, who, who have found things and, and found stones and artifacts that show that stories in the Bible actually did happen. And, and the, the, they are able to corroborate the, the, the story in the Bible with the, the record that has been found in history and through these archaeological digs. If you ever get time to go to London and go to the British Museum, there's lots of really good 
examples of that there of of of, of uh, scenes of things from archaeology where which corroborate what the story of of the Bible. We also know that ancient scrolls have been discovered in relatively recent times that show the Bible has not changed since it was written long ago. I know, you know, for, for, for those of us who are slightly younger, 1947, 1948 feels like sort of ancient history. Should I, you know, I don't want to be seen to be rude or, but you know, 1947 does feel like a, a long time ago now for those of us who are not quite as old as others. But in 1947, there was some, some ancient scrolls found in the land of Israel. And when I'm saying ancient, I'm, I'm meaning like they were, you know, in the, in the second and third century and, 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 and also dating back to the time before the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet those ancient scrolls that have been discovered and, and read demonstrate that the, the, the words that were recorded in the scriptures then are exactly the same as the ones that we have here to, in our own language today. So that's a real a real good validation of the fact that the Bible is not just a relatively recent book that is able to sort of prove itself, but that it is a historical document that hasn't changed over a number, over hundreds and thousands of years. And we talked about, didn't we, that the the, the this idea of God's nation of Israel being a the nation that's still in existence today and being the the center of the plan and purpose of God. Well, that's really the the key one of the key witnesses to the to the truth of the Bible. Israel as a nation has only existed again for a, 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 in relative terms a relatively small amount of time 75 years actually I think next month since the nation of Israel was was established and, and yet the Bible has has been you know in existence for hundreds of years and suggested that at the, at, you know, at some point that the nation of Israel was going to exist again for, for thousands of years as Israel did not exist as a nation and yet we see that the Bible words of the Bible coming true and that the fact that the nation of Israel exists again in our modern society. So what about this idea of is, a, is a, all of the Bible relevant to us? Because we, we know, don't we, that lots of people to, today suggest that large parts of the Bible are no longer relevant. Many more people will, will point to particularly the Old Testament and say, well, look, that, that was a, a, a nice to have, it's a, it's a nice document to have, but it, it's not something that, that you know, is relevant to, to me today. Well, I guess the litmus test for me is that, well, Jesus, the greatest man who ever lived, read, understood, and believed the Old Testament. So, to me, well, you know, the question is, well, if it was good enough for Jesus to do that, well, why would, and he is the, and the, the person that we are seeking to follow, why would we not want to believe and read and understand the Old Testament? We saw in our reading in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3 that Paul said that all scripture is profitable. And when he wrote that, well, mainly the, the, the scripture was mainly made up of the Old Testament. When he was talking to Timothy, he was talking about the, the scripture that they had, which was when you know, all of the writings that were uh, being, being written around that time wouldn't necessarily have been freely available to Timothy as they are freely available to us today. But Paul says that all scripture is profitable. And, and so that, again, is to, to me is a, is a great witness to the, to the fact that we should be involved in reading the whole Bible. And the great thing about the Bible is that the Bible message is consistent. You just can't take think, take what you want to read from the Bible and, and discount other parts of it just because it doesn't quite suit your, your, your personality, it doesn't suit your views, it doesn't suit your lifestyle choices. There's a, a consistency of message through the Bible and, and, and therefore the Bible is to be read as a complete, and a complete document. So then, what can we use the Bible for? Well, let's turn back to our, our reading from Second of Timothy chapter 3. Let's look at that on the screen again. It says, you, and Paul says to Timothy, and, and trying to encourage him, he says, you, however, continue in the things you have learned and become convinced of, knowing from whom you have learned them, 
And that from a child you have known the sacred writings which are able to give you wisdom that leads to salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired or, or breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. Okay, so, so what is the Bible useful for then? Well, the Bible tells us about God. It tells us about what God's character is like and some of the things that he has achieved in the past. What, what has God done in the past in his, his work with the nation of Israel and his work with the, the world as a whole? And the Bible has lots of information about that and that we can read and establishes the credibility of God in the world in which we live. It tells us, the Bible tells us, doesn't it, how we should live. That, that's what this is referring to in Second of Timothy, chapter 3. The Bible, the words of God are, are profitable for reproof, for correction, for instruction. So th there's, there's multiple aspects there, isn't there? The, the Bible, we can read the Bible, and, and by reading the Bible, we may come to a point in which it actually tells us that what we are doing now is, is not necessarily the right thing and we need to change. Or it may give us helpful advice, helpful instruction about what we should do in the future. There's lots of useful aspects for the Bible and the, and the way that we live and trying to, to, to become better people and better servants for God. The Bible tells us a lot about God's son Jesus. And, and what he did, the words that he spake, and the fact that he lived a perfect life but was killed, and so that, that through his, his, his life, death, and resurrection, we can have a chance of life. But it tells us that, that humans are, are sinners, but we, we, that God has provided a way of salvation for us. And the Bible also tells us about the future plan that God has for the world in which we live. There's more things in the, in the Bible that have, are, are yet to be fulfilled. And the Bible tells us a lot, what, about, a lot about what God has planned for the future. So there's lots of beneficial things to be had from, from reading the, the Word of God. There's, there's past, there's present, and there's future. So then, in terms of, what the, in terms of bringing all of these things together... The real question is, is, is what does the Bible ask us to do today? What is it that the, the Bible asks us to do today? Because that's what becomes relevant for us as we live our lives each and every day. Well, the Bible tells us that it wants us to read the, read the words of the Bible and so that we can come to understand more about God and what he wants us to do. And in response to that, then, we need to follow the things that God has asked us to do as we live our lives each and every day. We need to come to realize that we have no way of saving ourselves from the certainty of death. But we can read of the plan of salvation that God has put in place through the, the life and work of his son Jesus and the fact that God has offered a, a great hope for the future a hope of a coming kingdom on this on this earth ruled over by his son Jesus. All of us have been offered the opportunity to play a part in that in that kingdom. The question is now as to whether we want to take the time out to to read the things of the of, of God in the Bible, to understand this message and to place our hope and our, our trust in him that he will be, be able to save us and to grant us to be part of the kingdom that he has promised. Thank you for your time.